let's move into the basic principles of restorative justice. Um, for, number one, crime is a violation of people and of interpersonal relationships. Two, violations create obligations. Uh, the central obligation is to put right the wrongs. So before we go any further, um, in talking about the theoretical basis of restorative justice, I want to mention the four main types of programs. And these are uh, victim offender dialogue mediation conferences, uh, restorative group conferences, peacemaking circles, and community boards um, or panels. And so too, right here I want to clarify, let's talk about, you know, restorative justice Restorative justice, as I said, is a different, it's a way of thinking. It's a different reaction to the behavior. Restorative justice is not a program. There are restorative justice programs and types of programs that I've just mentioned here. So when you say restorative justice is a great program, that's incorrect language. You need to say that, you know, restorative justice is a reaction or a response uh, to criminal behavior or to wronged behavior. So let's talk about um, victim offender mediation. This is the classic model that involves the victim and an offender meeting in a facilitated process in which each party, both the victim and the offender, have the opportunity to express what happened and also to ask questions. Many of the early VOMs took place in prisons. Now also remember too when we're talking about a restorative justice, the victim has everybody that participates has to do so voluntarily so um, if the victim doesn't want to participate these these types of mediations aren't going to happen as well as uh, if the offender refuses to participate so many times what happens is the system or let's say a victim advocate might uh, is first they're going to talk to the victim. How does the victim feel? Does the victim even want to do this? If the victim, if the victim says, absolutely not, I want them going to prison, I want to go to the criminal justice system, then these types of programs won't happen. So let's say the victim approves. Well, then the mediator or the facilitator will then go to the, to the offender to see if they want to participate. And many times they will agree because it will look very favorable for them on the courts. So they, and they might be told, look, this is, this isn't going to take the place of punishment, but this is going to possibly reduce your punishment. But they have to, these programs are so entailed that you can't see an, a, 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 an offender is not going to say, yes, I want to do this just to get out of, get out of punishment. Because what they have to go through and what they have to accept and present is not easy. Okay, let's move to, uh, to the next one. The uh, Victim Offender Reconciliation Program, or the VORP. Now, this has been used in war-torn countries, states, and cities. Uh, next, the Restorative Group Conferencing Model. Now, this was introduced in the U.S. in 94, and it came uh, from Australia. Uh, the victim, the victim, the victim supporters, the offender, offender supporters, and really a facilitator will engage in a dialogue to explore what happened um, how each has been affected and what needs to happen. Every participant in these conferences um, has an opportunity to speak on the issues and has input also into the final outcome. Um, expressing emotions is, is, is encouraged and agreements about the obligations for the offender are by consensus of all participants. What I want to say too at this point about these three, as I said, um, it's all by volunteer uh, basis. But when you, what happens is, like in the victim offender mediation, you have the victim offender and a mediator, and they will both at that point too. They're very open, so the victim will tell uh, how they feel, what you know, what they need to happen, what they need from the offender, and the offender can do the same thing. And what will happen is at the end there will be uh, an outcome of maybe the restitution or what will be the consequences of. Um, the offender and what so you may have what the victim will do what the offender will do also and they have to both agree upon this at the end for anything uh, to happen from from the, that comes from the mediation so next we'll talk about the peacemaking circles 
Now, these are fashioned after the American Indian talking circles, and they include the victim, the victim supporters, offender, offender supporters, um, interested community members who participate, uh, and they participate in a structured dialogue about what happened, why it happened, uh, what is the impact of what happened, um, what is now needed to repair the harm and prevent it from happening again. How can we bring the victim and everyone harmed back whole? So in this process, the participants sit in a circle and they actually pass a talking stick or other object which circulates around the circle. And what's interesting, you know, I think they, they still use this within uh, lower age groups within grade school where, you know, all the students will sit in a circle and they'll pass on the ground. That means it's their turn to talk. Um, so the use of the talking stick really reduces the role of a facilitator. And so it eliminates crosstalk and interruptions because only the person that's holding the stick may speak. Uh, this process can involve separate circles for the victim and the offender before all parties are actually brought together um, to determine an, an action plan and address issues raised in the separate circles. Uh, by consensus, um, and I'll say this, these separate circles, this is the same thing that happens um, in the other uh, types of programs that I was talking about. The mediator will meet with the victim and the offender separately. Uh, by consensus at the end, uh, the circle can develop a sanction for the offender and they can stipulate responsibilities of uh, specific community members or family um, and even justice officials as a part of this total agreement. Now, the last one, the community boards or panel. Now, this is a model in which a small number of trained community members, they can meet with the offender to talk about what happened, um, how it has affected the victim and the community, um, this, this can determine activities that can be undertaken by the offender to address any restorative goals. Um, some panels involve victims and others receive in, input from the victim in a separate meeting. Sometimes these panels, if you see any of these, like even DUI panels, you might have um, an offender, uh, a DUI offender speaking to a group of uh, young people. And so there's no victims there. They're just speaking to them and they're telling them uh, uh, their experiences. You also have, you know, you see this too with the victims of, um, you see victims doing this well as well, where they're a panel, where they're speaking in front of people and talking to other people. Um, all of these models are continuously being adapted to meet particular circumstances. All of these processes require admission of guilt by the offender. Uh, there's a great variety of these programs that you'll find in states and localities, with some being very standardized and others following a unique approach that is more consistent <clears throat> with the philosophy of restorative justice communities around the state. Um, but one thing, each program is uh, locally initiated. Restorative justice models have now been used in schools, prisons, universities, and business. Restorative justice models are used frequently with adolescents. Um, you see this especially in, in, the, in the school, in lower grades, but especially in middle school and high school. In the United States, restorative justice programs um, are used primarily for juvenile offenders, as I said, and are overseen by the Office of Juvenile Justice and Delinquency Prevention. Uh, this was established through the Juvenile Justice and Delinquency Prevention Act of, of 1974. Um, despite the overwhelming popularity of these types of programs, the em empirical evidence is sparse. There's not a lot of empirical studies that have been completed or published or made public on the success of restorative justice. Um, <clears throat> Of the research that though that has been carried out uh, using reoffending as a d dependent variable, so reoffending as a dependent is what we're measuring. The range is from no difference to as much as over 37% lower recidivism than the control of non-participants are. So it's a much higher lower recidivism rate for those that actually participate. While the empirical evidence is not overwhelming or convincing, most people will actually report that research and program development should continue. It does work. Now, there are times, though, like I said, it's all voluntary. So even though, uh, let's say an offender and a victim go into a mediation, 
at some point, either one of them can, can discontinue it. They can say no. Um, anytime during the mediation or during the, the programming, um, the offender could reoffend. Um, and so therefore it stops. Um, uh, when I teach the restorative justice class, I have a number of videos. And you can also go to YouTube and do some re do some searches if you like on restorative justice. And you'll see that there are a lot of victims that have restored themselves through the restorative justice. They have asked to speak to their offender that may be in prison. And so they, they themselves have forgiven the offender, but they are thriving. They are uh, restoring themselves back to whole that you see. So I, I encourage that at any time. <clears throat> Okay, now we're going to move into the theoretical perspectives behind um, restorative justice. In, in order to understand the interpersonal dynamics of restorative justice, it's necessary to understand what effect script psychology is. So effect script psychology is, um, it's the best theoretical explanation of how restorative justice works. There's three parts, uh, biological, psychological, and social. The biological part is what happens within our biological structure. We all have the same repertoire of biological effects. Um, enjoyment, joy, surprise, startle, distress, anguish, uh, fear or terror, anger or rage, shame, humiliation, uh, disgust, or dismell. And once again, these nine pairs of responses happen at a biological level and are generally out of our consciousness awareness. The primary task for humans is to maximize the positive and minimize the negative. Have you heard this before? Utilitarianism? Uh, we do this by minimizing the blocks to these effects and then we maximize the power to recognize what is happening biologically. So before everything gets out of our hands. <clears throat> Here are some definitions uh, for words that people use interchangeably, but are really just considered different states or processes. Effect, as I said, it's the biological event that happens automatically in response to something internally or externally. Uh, feelings are what take place once we become aware of the effects and their corresponding biological component. Um, and it, emotions are patterns of the effects and feelings that will make up the structure waves of responding to the environment. These are our life scripts that make up our personalities. Okay, let me talk a little bit about social script motivation. Scripts, they're, they're the pattern responses that are a combination of our effects and our cognition, so what we think. These scripts make up our unique personalities. Be because we all have the same effects in common, when someone's feeling something, we may begin to feel something similar to what they're feeling. This is what's called effective resonance. This is the core of restorative justice. When we come from a place of respect and value, the eff effective resonance is positive. We both, we all feel valued. We both all feel like someone is interested in us and in what we're doing. They're interested in our feelings. They're interested in our ideas and our thoughts. Have we been affected by what's occurred? This facilitates a feedback, which is the cycle of positive resonance. Unfortunately, there's a glitch. Isn't there always a glitch? Um, the opposite can also be true. Um, if we are feeling hostile, fearful, and uncomfortable, then we resonate that too to others. So knowing that, what is our goal here? What do we want to do? Um, <clears throat> this, the structure of the restorative justice conferences, they create a safe place. It's a place where respect is paramount and where positive 
positive effect, the positive feelings and emotions that we transfer to someone else, they can now lead to a greater understanding. And hopefully we have now started stronger communities. It, this, this resonance, it now allows us to rebalance ourselves at the level of effect that we I just talked about, the biological, the feelings, the psychological, um, and the emotionally uh, within the group, within the victim offender community. Okay, that's the it for the second half.